Hello, everybody. All right, uh, welcome to AP Stats, and we're going to redo a, a one sample t test today. So it's a hypothesis test with one sample, and it's a mean, not a proportion problem. Okay? So in our example here, male employees in an organization have an average salary of 75000 In a random sample of 30 women from this organization, the mean salary was found to be 73500 with a standard deviation of 4000 Women claim that they are being discriminated against and are being paid less than males. Do they have a reason to complain? Okay, so the basic idea is we know the men make, what, 75,000, we know that, and the women, we take a sample, they make less than that, but what's the chance, like, I would get a different result every time I take a different sample, probably with different women. Okay, so is that just by chance, or is that, you know, a significant difference that we can say that women make less than men? That's what we're doing here. Okay, notice it's a mean problem. It says mean, it will say mean or average there usually, but it's not a proportion. Okay, 73,500 is not a salary out of a total, like a percentage or anything. Okay, also note they give you a standard deviation. That's a great indicator that you're doing a mean problem. Okay, let's get down to our business here. Okay, step one, test name. Okay, all right, we have one sample. We're gonna run a hypothesis test to check this claim here or this, um, idea. Our test name is a one sample t-test. Okay, our hypothesis. All right. It's always got to be a parameter. It can't be a sample mean here. It's a statement about the parameter. The claim is that the hypothesis, or sorry, that the mean salary is 75,000. So I put a number here, 75 thousand okay and then when I do my hypotheses this has to be the same this number has to go here as well always there's never a change there I just need to put a sign in there that's not going to be an equal to okay that could be less than greater than or not equal to in this case we think the women might be being paid less we think the mean salary for women might be less than 7500 okay important things to note this is the mean salary for men. We know that. There's no chance that the mean for salary for men is like less than 75,000, excuse me, because we know it's 75,000 already. That, that mean symbol indicates that we've checked the population. We know the true mean salary. We're wondering about the mean salary of women, though. That's what we're doing here, and that's what this is going to represent. Okay? All right, as usual in our step one here, we have to state the test name, hypotheses, and define the parameter. Our parameter is mu, not x bar, okay? And what we're looking for here is the true mean salary of women, not just of women, but women at this organization. So make sure you identify your specific population. All right, I've got that. One point out of four. Conditions, okay? Conditions are the same as they always are with our other tests that we've done, so nothing big here. Okay, if you look back, it says that we have a random sample, so all I have to do here is put a check. If it did not, I would say we assume, we assume that the sample of 30 women at this organization is a random sample. Okay, but in this case, it's just a check. 10% uh, condition or independence. We're assuming that 30 women are less than 10% of all women at the organization. I'm sure that's true. Okay, and then normality. This is the mean problem, so it's no longer n times b and n times q greater or equal to 10. It's nice and easy. It's n must be greater or equal to 30. In our case, we have 30, that's our sample size. It is greater or equal to 30, so I've met that condition right there. Okay, moving on, here comes our calculations, the main body of our work. We have to show the T-score calculation, standard deviation calculation, degrees of freedom must be noted. Okay, and we're gonna do the P-value and um, this is not required, but we should show a picture and write our problem in math language, okay? And we'll talk about all these other calculations are required. Okay, notice it's a t-test because we're doing a mean problem. All mean problems will be a t-distribution, okay? And z's are proportions. Again, the reason we use that, the t is better for small sample sizes than the z score, okay? On a problem when I have a large sample size, I could use the z-score. But at that point, the t-score is virtually the same. It's just as good. Okay, so we will always use a t for a mean problem and a z for proportions. All right? Okay, I've got my information here. The mean of the male salary was 7,500. Our sample found a sample mean of 73,500, and I got a standard deviation of 4,000, and we have 30 females. First of all, my degrees of freedom. 
very simple for a one sample t-test, n minus 1. 30 minus 1 is 29. Okay, let's get our standard deviation here. Okay, it's going to be the sample standard deviation, 4,000, divided by the square root of n, which is 30. Let's get that value here. Okay, 4,000 divided by square root of 30 gets me 730.296. I'm going to call it 0.3. Okay, that's the basis of our picture here. The center of the distribution is supposed to have, if it was the same, if, remember we're operating under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true always, so we're operating as if the women's salary is 75,000, seeing how likely it is that we could get our sample and have a result of 73,500 if that was true. So we're always under, uh, operating under the assumption the null is true. Okay, so down here, for our salaries, for our distribution, the mean salary is supposed to be 7,500. Our standard deviation here is now 730.3. Okay, and we want to know the likelihood of what we found, 73,500 or less. How likely is that? That's what we're doing here. That helps me write my problem, okay? Um, and I'm going to first do, calculate my T-score here. I have T with 29 degrees of freedom. Okay, remember that's different for every problem, which is really cool about the, the T distribution. All right, and as I say it, this is what I'm asking about in my problem. What have we got in the problem here, which was 73,500 minus what it's supposed to be, 75,000 over the standard deviation of 73.03. I did that calculation. I have a t-score of negative 2.05. All right. And now you might be thinking, you know, hey, that's more than two standard deviations away, so it would be a rare occurrence. But remember, we're working on the t distribution, so don't be so sure. It depends on the degree to freedom. If that's rare or not, it's not a simple case like the z-score, where that would be a rare event because it's outside of two standard deviations. Okay, let's write our problem. Get my problem from the picture here. I'm asking the likelihood that your sample mean would be less than, right here, 73,500. Okay, that corresponds to the probability that you would have T with 29, a T score of 29 degree, degrees of freedom that is less than negative 2.05. All right, and we're going to run that test on our calculator and get our P value and then we'll have our conclusion. Okay, so I'm going to go to my stat key, slide over to tests, okay, and I'm gonna to go to number two, a t-test. That's a one sample t-test right there, t-test. Okay, we're inputting statistics. Okay, our null of our mean, excuse me, our mean of our null is 75,000. Next to entry is x bar. That's our sample mean, 73,500. S of X is the standard deviation of our sample, 4,000. Okay, N is 30. And then I want my hypothesis to be less than, which is the center choice. Go down and calculate on that. Okay, and it says, if you notice, the T is negative 2.05, which is what we calculated there already. And our P value, what I'm looking for here is 0 0.0245, all right? No alpha level was mentioned in the problem, so the understood alpha level at that point would be 0 0.05, okay? This is low, then my p-value is low, so our saying in our class is if the p-value is low, reject the hoe, okay? So we're gonna reject the null hypothesis, so watch what's happening. We are going to reject the null for the women, and then we're gonna accept this. We're not proving this, okay, but it's highly likely that this is the case, okay? The p-value is 0.0245, it's like 2.5% roughly. That's the probability of getting the results we got if the null hypothesis was true, okay? And that's less than 5%, so that's considered unlikely. So we're suspicious that that's probably not true then for the women, because that would be unlikely to get that result if it was true, all right? Let's go down and state our conclusion. I've typed it up because I write horribly and it would take me forever. 
All right, with A, there should be a gap in there or no P here. With a P value of 0 0.0245 and an alpha level of 0.05, we do, have, we do have sufficient evidence to reject the null that the true mean salary for women at this organization is 75000 That's putting it in context. We're telling them we're rejecting that. Therefore, we accept the HA that the true salary for women is likely lower than $75,000. we are not sure it's under $75,000, so we're going to put that extra statement of caution in there. Right, and that is our one sample t-test. Thank you very much.